Let's go. How does being on a team, serving at church, David and Goliath, and being in the tunnel all relate? Let's unpack it. Welcome to the Unpacking It podcast, where we unpack parallels, metaphors, and topics in sports that relate to life and faith. I'm Bryce Johnson in Charlotte, North Carolina, and we have a special episode today because we are sharing a recent sermon that I gave at my local church, The Point, in Belmont, North Carolina, and it was a, a series that related to sports. And so thankfully I got to be a part of that series. And, and then I wrapped up the series with a, a title called let's go. And so you will get to hear that sermon today for the podcast. And so before we jump in, I want to mention a few things, uh, but I hope that this uh, sermon will be encouraging to you as we get the fall started. And, and although I'm, I'm speaking to you know the local congregation uh, that, my my team locally, uh, I hope that there are plenty of parallels for you wherever you go to church and, and the motivation uh, to take some next steps uh, in your faith journey. So uh, so check it out and let me know what you think afterward. You can email me, Bryce, at unpackingit.com. Also want to mention, Fantasy Football Fellowship is starting up. And so be sure to check out fantasyfootballfellowship.com. Make sure you become a free member Encourage your league to participate as well. We've got the the debut of the new season, so the new week, uh, the new breakout is is uh, going to be launched, and so check that out on fantasyfootballfellowship.com. You can also subscribe to the Fantasy Football Fellowship podcast, and while you're searching for podcasts, also add the Unpacking It Minute as well. And so we hope that you'll subscribe to all three of our podcasts here at Unpacking It. Next week, we'll be back to our normal kind of format and all throughout the fall. We'll be talking football here on the Unpacking It podcast for the most part. And then, of course, talking fantasy football on the Fantasy Football Fellowship podcast. I want to thank our sponsor, Upward Sports. Be sure to check out upward.org slash unpack and start a sports ministry at your church. They use sports as a bridge into the community. And so they want to come alongside of you and your church. And so they desire to help you advance your mission and, and your church's you know, goal of, of pointing people to Jesus. And, and so they just want to help you use sports as a ministry tool. And so start preparing for winter sports, spring sports, get ahead of it and, and allow Upward to, to be a part of that process for you. And so you can talk to them, find out some more information, go to upward.org slash unpack. Well, right now we're going to jump into a sermon that starts off with a word from Tom Brady. Here we go. Let's go! We're ready, 11 o'clock! All right. Hey, I'm Bryce. I'm psyched to be here today as we continue our series called Team Together Everyone Achieves More. And thankfully, this is right in my sweet spot because every day with Unpacking It, we're, we're talking sports, relating it to life and faith. And so today... We are continuing to relate serving to being on a team in football. And so we're going to look at some of those parallels today. But, uh, but man, I love being a part of the Point Church. My wife, Jody, my daughters, Maddie and Michaela, we're, uh, we're all in. We love it here. And so thankful for the opportunity today to share what God has put on my heart. And, and again, to continue what Ray and Justin have talked about for the last couple of weeks, we'll take a look at David and Goliath again. We got a little spin on that today. So we'll have some, we'll have some fun there. And, uh, and, I, and I'm psyched. The, uh, uh, the jerseys everybody's wearing looking good. I, I just want to clarify, I am a Panthers fan, 
but I'm wearing Peyton Manning today because I love Peyton Manning too. Yeah, I love watching him on the Manning cast during Monday Night Football. But I got to admit, I'm not really a jersey wearer, maybe because I got cut from the football team in eighth grade, and so it's like, ah, am I going to really wear a jersey? But I like hanging them on my wall. So I've got a studio, I've got a, a man cave, and sometimes my wife lets me put some, some jerseys on the wall. So, um, but glad to get it off the wall, put it on today, and, uh, and be in football mode. Because here we are, the football season is upon us. We got a little college football yesterday, already a nice upset. We got Panthers looking better in preseason. And so as we think about football, we're thinking about the, the, the team mentality. You know, they, they got 11 players on offense, 11 on defense. You got special teams players. But what's the key? They've got to know their role. They've got to execute. And they got to step up when called upon. And so we've been talking about what it means to, to go out, what it means to line up, what it means to, to get ready and prepare to play. And so today we're saying, let's go. It's go time. It's game time. As we step into the fall, it's time to serve. It's time for all of us to understand what our role is and to step right in to step into that, into that role. And so the, the parallel I, I, I want to use today, and I just ran out of that tunnel right there, but before a football team heads onto the field, they get, they get huddled up in the tunnel, and one of the teammates gives the final charge, the final encouragement to say, all right, we're going to go out on that field, and we're going to fight, and when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. And so I'm that guy today where we're talking about going out serving. So think about being in the tunnel, and, and so we're going we're gonna to use uh, that encouragement to step up, to step out. It's, it's go time. And so really, it begins with let's go, follow Jesus, become like Jesus, and serve like Jesus. And so if, if we say, yeah, I, I love Jesus. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a Christian. I, 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 yeah, I want to follow Jesus. Well, let's go. Let's go. If we want to be like Jesus, we've got to serve like Jesus. He came to serve. And, and so we emulate him. And, and so the, the question is, well, well, why do we serve? And why have we been talking about serving for a whole month? Because we need each other. We, we are the body of Christ. We are the hands and feet of Jesus. And as Ray talked about a couple weeks ago, when, when we say yes to Jesus, we're on the team. And so, so we're on the team, and so we have a role. We have gifts and skills and abilities that come from God for his purposes. And so we've been, we've, we've been equipped with these gifts. And so the question is, are we using them? And, and are we using them just for ourselves? And maybe we use some of those gifts at work and we make money from it, but, but do we actually use the gifts to serve God for his purposes, for his plans? Starting here with the local church, really starting at home, but, but we, we have the mentality of serving all the time, serving at home, serving in our neighborhoods, serving here at church, serving at work, serving around the world. And we are like Jesus when, when we do that. And, and so we have to remain, uh, keep the right motivation and the why behind serving. It's not out of obligation or I'm not here to make you feel guilty. I'm here to encourage you and get you excited to get out there on the field. It's go time. Let's go. Because the blessing that comes from serving is incredible because we're exercising the gifts that God's given us. And then we get to connect with one another. We get to, to be alongside teammates. And, and, you know, some of us are called to throw the ball and some are called to catch and some are called to block. But we do it together and we make up the team. And, and, and then we get to have an impact together. And so we use those gifts to then have an impact and serve one another. But here's the reality. We're in the tunnel and there are thoughts rushing through our head. For some of us, there's a reason we're, we're, we're saying no to serving. And maybe there's some, some thoughts where it's like, I don't know if I really want to follow Jesus. I don't know if I want to live for Jesus in all areas of my life. I'm not sure I'm ready to commit. And we're just saying about surrender. But it starts with this mentality of surrender to say, Jesus, I love you. You've changed my life. I'm yours. How do you want to use me? How, where, where can I go? What are, what are, what are the needs? Lord, I'm yours. I'm open-handed. I'm open-hearted. I'm open-minded. Yes. We say yes to Jesus, and then we say yes to whatever service he calls us into. 
But unfortunately, sometimes we get these negative thoughts that take over, that hold us back and prevent us from running out on the field and we're stuck in the tunnel. No, we gotta get out of the tunnel and go. And so is it, is it maybe doubt or fear? We're, we're terrified to step out or, or step in or step up. We're, we're scared to use our gifts because we feel inadequate. Or a couple weeks ago, Justin talked about the comparison trap. We think, well, I'm not as good as that guy. Uh, I can't do what she does. And we start letting the comparison you know, rob us from, from stepping out and serving in, 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 a, in a powerful way. Sometimes we'll say, oh, I'm too busy. And, we, and we, 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 don't, we don't take the step. I can't do it. I'll fail if I try. My, my skills don't translate. I'm not good enough to do that. I'm not good at anything. We can't buy these lies. We've got to overcome these lies. And how do we do it? We go back to the why of why we serve. We serve because Jesus loves us, has changed our heart, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, we are equipped to do what he calls us to do. Because God gives us those gifts. God gives us those abilities, the, you know, the spiritual gifts, of the, 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 the gift of faith or generosity or hospitality. Those are the gifts that we use. And then the skills that we've, we've developed based on experiences, we use those to serve him. And so this, this idea that, oh, I'm not, I'm not qualified. No, guess what? You are qualified. We go to some scripture here, 2 Corinthians 3, 5. Paul, who's on fire for the Lord, is, is, is telling everybody about Jesus and, and, and how, he can, how he changed Paul's life. And so he wrote a lot of the New Testament. Well, this is what he says in 2 Corinthians 3, 5. Not that we are sufficiently qualified in ourselves to claim anything is coming from us, but our sufficiency and qualifications come from God. So it's not about you. It's not about me or how great we think we are or how we don't think we're great. Like, oh, I'm not great enough. I can't, I can't serve. I'm not qualified. No, if you've given your life to Jesus, surrendered your life to him, he qualifies you. He equips you. You're sufficient enough in him to, to, to step up, to get out there. Let's go. And, and, and some of us may feel like, man, I'm, I'm weak. We have to remember, Paul talks about this too. Um, he's, he's crying out to the Lord and, and, and Jesus says to him in 2 Corinthians 12, 9 and 10, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So if you feel weak, you feel like, ah, I don't know if I can do that. Good, because here's what Paul says. So now I'm glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. And so we don't, we don't depend on ourselves. We depend on him, his power, his spirit, his love within us. That allows us that, that outpouring into the, the people that we serve. And so as we continue to be transformed and we continue to, to rely not on our own abilities, but on him and the abilities that he's given us and the strength that he gives us. And so here we are in the tunnel. We're supposed to be here. We have what it takes. Don't forget the gift your father gave you. And for some today, you go, I don't know what my gift is. We well, gotta ask him. And, and you gotta put yourself out there sometimes to, to, to figure it out too. And if you've, if you've gotten some of the affirmation from people that, that have pointed it out in you, take that as a clue and a sign. And, so, and so, so we have to remember that God has given us gifts. We have to remember that it comes from him and therefore his purposes to serve his church and we can't forget to use it. A quick story. So when I was in middle school, I actually met my wife in middle school, but when I was in middle school at Crestdale Middle School in Matthews, I was uh, voted the president of student council. It sounds maybe different than what it really is, but regardless, my, my campaign was don't think twice, vote for Bryce, be nice, vote for Bryce. And it worked. So I got to be the president. It was a silly role. But one of the cool things we did was we raised money for Make-A-Wish Foundation. And, and so the, the local media found out that the school raised all this money, nothing to do with me, but the school did it, it was cool. So they invited us to go on the local country music station, 103.7. 
And so it was kind of a cool opportunity. I think I got to skip the morning school. Um, but before I left that morning, my dad said this to me. I'll never forget it. He said, Bryce, don't forget to use your radio voice. I go, what? Okay, man, cool. All right, let's go. And so I'm, I'm at the radio station, and it's uh, the, the morning show is Jeff Roper in the morning. And so he introduces the other kids that came with me, the student council, and it's, it's my turn to, to step up to the mic. And uh, Jeff Roper goes, uh, all right, Bryce, good morning, man. How you doing? And I go, hey, everyone, I'm Bryce. Great to be here, or something like that. And this is what Jeff said. He goes, whoa, somebody brought his radio voice today. And it was in that moment that, that I was affirmed that, wait, do I have a radio voice? And so my dad affirmed it, then Jeff Roper affirmed it, and now here I am all these years later. I've been on the radio or podcast for almost 20 years. And at one point, I was using it for my own purpose and glory. I love being on the radio. I love being a radio guy. And then God changed my heart. He changed my heart and he gave me a new vision, a new passion to use my gift for him. And so now I use sports parallels to relate to life and biblical truth because I believe in God's word and, and I want to see sports fans following Jesus. And I know that God gave me that gift to be able to communicate and to, to have a voice, but my voice is for him. He gave it to me. It's not for me. It's to serve other people. And so all of us have a gift. What is God saying to you as far as don't forget your gift? Don't forget to use your gift. Think back even to, to when you were young and gifts that you maybe you've pushed, pushed aside or you haven't been utilizing them in a while. And if you think you don't have a gift, don't buy that lie. You've got gifts for God's kingdom, for his church. Let's use them. Let's use them. So, so what is it? What is that, that that God's telling you today? You'll be amazed at the impact that he'll make through you as you step out and utilize the gifts that he's given you. The last few weeks, we've been talking about David and Goliath. And we're, we're, we're in the tunnel right now. And here's the reality. A lot of uh, sports and, and whether it's the media talking or coaches, players, they'll use the David and Goliath story. Oftentimes out of context, but, but they, they use it. And, and so I hear about it all the time. And sometimes I roll my eyes. Oh, here's David and Goliath. So when Ray asked me to talk about David and Goliath, I was a little hesitant. But it's a powerful story. And it's not just about the underdog beating the, the big giant. Because if we're going to do that story, then, or that perspective, I'd be talking about App State beating Michigan, right? Where my Mountaineers at? They were in the last service. Oh, we still got some more. All right, good. So that would be that story. But today I want to take a different uh, approach to this story. And, and, and I, I really believe that, that we can get a lot out of this. So in review, over the last few weeks, as, as Ray and, and Justin have, have talked about this story, David is anointed as the next king of Israel after Saul. He was chosen by God through Samuel. And although David is the least likely choice, the spirit of God empowers him for service. And so that's, that's key. We'll, go, we'll get back to that. But in 1 Samuel 16, 13, it says, the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. And then in verse 18, it says, the Lord is with him. And so, the Israelites and Philistines are, are, are in a battle and, and Goliath challenges the, the Israelites to choose one man to fight him. And all the Israelites were terrified and, and nobody stepped up. And so for 40 days, Goliath came forward and took his stand morning and evening. And then finally, David shows up and he was there to just give his brother some food. But he hears the challenge from Goliath and he accepts the challenge. David stepped up when the team, the Israelites, needed him. And ultimately, he defeated Goliath. And so I want to I talk about a few verses in this uh, story. And 1 Samuel 16 and, and 1 Samuel the chapter 17, you got to read the full story. Don't just take the, the David and Goliath story based on the children's book or like I read to my daughters. There's more to this. There's so much here. But, but here's, well, it should be up behind me. This is what uh, David told Saul, who was the king at the time. He goes, don't worry about this Philistine. I'll go fight him. 
And then Saul says, don't be ridiculous. There's no way you can fight this Philistine and possibly win. You're only a boy, and he's been a man of war since his youth. But David persisted. I've been taking care of my father's sheep and goats. When a lion or a bear comes to steal a lamb from the flock, I go after it with a club and rescue the lamb from its mouth. If the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw and club it to death. I have done this to both lions and bears, and I'll do it to this pagan Philistine too, for he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear will rescue me from this Philistine. And so Saul finally consented. He said, all right, go ahead or let's go. And, and, and they said, and may the Lord be with you. And so then we, we, we go down a little bit and now Goliath and, and David are, are you know, ready to, to, to battle here. And so Goliath yells, come over here and I'll give you your flesh to the birds and wild animals. And then David, sorry, I'm, I'm used to reading this story to my daughters. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so David replied to the Philistines, uh, to the Philistine, Goliath, you come to me with sword, spear, and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. And so what do we learn from David about serving, about his approach to saying yes and to stepping up? First, David's faith was in God, not himself. And so just like I was talking about earlier, he, he, we are empowered by him, by God, and our, so our faith is in him. So the confidence that David had came based on his faith in God. And then also the motivation, sure, he was serving the Israelites, but he was really serving God. And, and so yes, we serve one another, but we're really serving God. And as we do, we serve each other. And, and so again, we can, we can serve with confidence, not based on our own abilities. What was, what was David to be confident about? He's a little guy. He's a young guy. He was overlooked, but God had his hand on him and called him to do this. And so he put his trust and confidence in God. So this isn't a story about David. This is a story about God and his power and his ability and, and, and David's ability because of, of God. And, and then also, uh, this, the, verse 45, it says, uh, David, he was there in the name of the Lord. So God was with him and David was there for God. And then in verse 46, uh, David says that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And so we serve because we want people to know God, that there is a God, the God of the universe who loves us, created us, designed us uniquely, he, he, he loves us and wants us to know him and fellowship with him. And so as we serve, we point to that God and people see that we are the hands and feet of Jesus. And they go, man, I wanna know, I wanna know that Jesus, that God that's, that's behind this person serving because we, we love in that way and serve in that way. And, and so again, David was relying on God's strength, his spirit, trusting in his power. And so as followers of Jesus, we have the Holy Spirit within us. He equips us. He gives us the gifts to use for his purposes. In 1 Corinthians 3.16, it says, Do you not know and understand that you, the church, are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells permanently in you, collectively and individually? So we've got that Holy Spirit. We say yes to Jesus. He comes in and takes over and we've, we've now got the power of the Holy Spirit within us. And we're all, we've got the same Holy Spirit. If we're following Jesus together, we've got the same Holy, Holy Spirit individually and collectively. The second thing we learned from David in regards to serving, David had experience, but not exact experience. You know, he says, oh, I've done this with both lions and bears and I'll do it to this pagan Philistine too. Now, he, he hadn't killed a giant before, but he knew, okay, yeah, the bears and the lions, yeah, so there's some similarities there. Many of us are hesitant to serve because we feel like, well, ah, I don't have the experience. I've never done this before. My, my past experience doesn't necessarily translate exactly. And this is kind of a silly example, but, but I think it's true. The idea that, that we need people to help park. We need a parking team. It's like, oh, do I have, I've never parked anybody before. Have you parked your own car? <laughs> you know how to park. So, so whatever our experience is, and, and for, for some of us, in, you know, whether it's in, in, in business or the different roles that you have at work, you have all this experience. For you know, people that, that deal with clients and maybe you're a salesman and you're interacting with people and you're building relationships, that's a gift. Use it here to connect, join the connections team. So, so it doesn't have to be exact experience, 
But if we've got experience and ultimately God is the one that empowers us to do it. Third thing, David was willing. He says, I'll go fight him. I'll take care of it. I'll step up. Again, he relied on God. And so there was a challenge and a need and David stepped up. He took on the role. Nobody else was willing, but David, but David knew he was supposed to do this task and he knew with God's help, he could do it. And so are we willing or are we just staying in the tunnel? We're not running out. We're not running out of that game, into the game. We're not running out to serve. I mean, it would be like the, the quarterback remaining in the tunnel and all of a sudden they get out there for the game and it's the wide receiver's going, Where, where's the quarterback? How, how am I going to get the ball if the quarterback's not out here? And the quarterback's saying back, no, I, I, I don't have the experience. I'm too scared. I don't want to do this. No, we need you. And so the same is, is for us. We all have a specific role. We are on the team. We, we as followers of Jesus are on the team. You've got a role. And if you're not fulfilling that role, you're letting us down. You're leaving us out there. I'm not, who's throwing the ball to me? So we've got, to, we've got to be willing. So David was willing. In 1 Corinthians 15, 58, it says, so my dear brothers and sisters, be strong and immovable. Always work enthusiastically for the Lord. For you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. So the thing today is serving isn't a, <laughs> a horrible thing or drudgery or whatever. Is that even a word? But whatever, that's, it's not this negative thing. It is an invitation and, and an excitement to serve. And so are we going to be willing to serve and do so enthusiastically? Not just going through the motions, not just checking the box, not doing it out of obligation or guilt. It's, it's no, I'm willing. David was willing to fight. He was willing to step up, step in. He saw the need. He saw the challenge. Yeah, I got this. Because, again, his confidence wasn't in himself. And so let's do this work and serve enthusiastically for the Lord. The Lord that, that has changed our life and transformed our heart. Let's go serve out, out of that, that, that outflow of love and enthusiasm and passion. And, and the other thing that David was willing, the fact that he was willing to take the risk. You know, these football players, they, they run out of that field. They're taking a big risk that that linebacker is going to come over the middle and knock the, knock the wide receiver's head off. But they're willing to take the risk. And for some of us, there is a risk to step out and serve. And, and, and overcoming these thoughts of, of fear and doubt and inadequacy. But we take the risk and we go, we take a step of faith because our faith is in God and not ourselves. The fourth thing that David demonstrates as he served he moved quickly and he executed in first samuel 17 48 it says as goliath moved closer to attack david quickly ran out to meet him quickly he quickly ran so are we dragging our feet in the tunnel or are we running out of the tunnel and we're ready to serve with enthusiasm let's go we got this and so the other part of it, as, as we read in uh, verse 50, so David triumphed over the Philistine with only a sling and a stone, for he had no sword. So what did he do? He executed. He executed Goliath, but he executed. It wasn't just good intentions. He finished. He finished the role. It wasn't just talk. He took action. And so for some of us, sure, we've signed up on the card the last couple of weeks, but now it's time to execute. Are we dragging our feet or are we running quickly? And we're saying, yeah, let's go. I'm ready to execute. It's time. We can't bail now. We're all needed. We've all got a roll. If you're the quarterback, be the quarterback. If you're the lineman, be the lineman. They all fit together. We all fit together as the body of Christ. We got to do what needed to be, just like David did what needed to be done. We have to do what needs to be done. And so here's the final charge as we head out the tunnel, head out of the tunnel today. We've got this, but we've got to remain with our, with our eyes fixed on Jesus, that we serve with him because of him and, and by his strength and by his power. And so he was a servant. Let's emulate him. We've got to have that same mentality of, of, of serving a servant's heart 
And so as we seek him, as we know him, as we study his word and we dive into his word with enthusiasm too, he changes us and we become more like Jesus. And then we, we just, we're looking for opportunities to serve. Put me in, put me in, I'm ready, I'm ready, let's go, let's go. And we glorify him by how we serve. And when we use these gifts that he's given us for his purposes, it points to him. He's the creator, he's the gift giver. Again, it's not about us, it's about him and glorifying him and serving others. We also have to remember that we're not performing, we're serving. We're not earning God's love, we're reflecting it by loving others. And also as we head out onto the field, as we head out to serve, we do so together, we have to continue to encourage one another, spur one another on, pick each other up. Just like, just like a, a, a lineman, a center will say, hey, look out for this blitz. Look out for this blitz over here. Look out, look out over here. We've got to do that for one another. And we'll be talking about life groups in the coming weeks, which is a big part of that. But even the teams that we're on as we serve, encouraging one another, affirming each other's gifts, saying, don't forget to use your gift. Don't forget the gift that God's given you. I'll read Romans 12, 10 through 12. It says, be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. And so as we execute, as we go out and, and, and go on the field and, and, and serve, let's do so with zeal and keeping our spiritual fervor. Remaining in prayer. Let's pray, you know, we gotta be prayed up as we go out there. And then in 1 Corinthians 16, 13, it says, be on guard, stand firm in the faith, be courageous, be strong. So we're ready, we're ready, right? We're ready to head out of the tunnel. And, and so let me share one final, final thought here. We're gonna go away from football for just a moment. And uh, I know some people in here are, are not Duke fans. I see uh, Chris over there, not a Duke fan. So, but, but a couple weeks ago, the Global Leadership Summit uh, was hosted here at The Point and seen all around the world. We were a satellite location. But Coach K actually spoke, and he was awesome. He did a great job. But he said something that I believe will be powerful. So put your, your hatred for Duke uh, aside for a moment. This is what he shared with us. When he was the Olympic basketball coach, um, you know, LeBron James, Kobe, D. Wade, all those guys were on that team. This is what he told them at the, at the start when they gathered together. He said, I want you to understand one thing. You are not on the U.S. Olympic team. And of course, they looked at him puzzled. And this is what Coach K said. Look at that gold medal. We will not win the gold medal if you play for the United States Olympic team. We will win if you are the U.S. team. If you own it, you will win. And so how about this? We, we don't go to the Point Church. We don't serve for the Point Church. We are the Point Church. We are the hands and feet of Jesus. We are the body of Christ. So we've got to own it. We've got to buy in. We are one. We are the team. And so we represent Christ. We, we represent the, 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 the Point. But we serve and we own it and we buy in. So play your role. Let's go. And so, so what today? Here's our so what as we wrap things up. It's game time. God is with you and he will equip you as you serve him. So let's rely on him. Now what? Let's go. See the need, step up, accept the challenge and serve. And so thank you for allowing me to, to serve today and to, and to use the gifts that God has given me. But even this week, I had to overcome the doubts. Am I really qualified? Am I good enough to do this? And so whatever fears or doubts you're, you're wrestling with, like, ah, I don't think I can serve, allow God to use you. And the impact that he'll make through you is remarkable and important, and we need you. And so let's be enthusiastic and excited. Let's go. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that, that you are the one that gives us gifts and abilities. Lord, help us to use them for your purposes and your glory. Lord, help us to overcome the doubts, the, the, the feelings of inadequacy, that we're not good enough. And the reality is we are weak, 
But good news, we're weak because then that allows you to be strong in us as we trust you and rely on you. Lord, help us to grasp that and to yield to you and to trust your, the, the power of the Holy Spirit within us. Help us to recognize the, the, the unity that we have here as the body of Christ. Help us to know our role and know our gifts and to be excited and enthusiastic to serve you and to serve alongside each other, Lord. We thank you for all that you're doing through the point. We thank you for all the people that are already serving, that allow us to be here today. The ones turning on the microphone and keeping the volume right and the, 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 the people that are taking care of my daughters right now in the back that allow me to serve right now. Lord, I thank you for, for the, the, the ways that you've brought us together, all of us together here at the point. Help us to, to continue to grow as we keep our eyes fixed on you. Help us to become more like Jesus. Help us to serve like Jesus. And Lord, today, if anybody in here is hesitant and wondering, oh man, gosh, do I even want to follow Jesus? I pray, Lord, that you would stir in their hearts to surrender their lives to you. I pray, Lord, that, that if there's anybody here that, that is, is, is ready, I pray that they'd say yes. And if that is you, I, I, the, the prayer is, I surrender. God, God, take over my life. I believe that Jesus came to earth. He died on the cross. He paid the punishment for my sin. He was resurrected. And through faith, I believe. I believe in your grace. I believe in your mercy. And so, Lord, if, that, if, if anybody is praying that prayer today, I pray, Lord, that they would acknowledge it, that they would take the next steps. And, Lord, for all of us, that, that, that we would take the next steps to serve, to serve you in all areas of our life, including here at the point. And so, Lord, I thank you. We give you all the glory and honor and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's go. There you go. There's the sermon. Are you ready to run on the field? Let's go. I wonder how many times I said let's go in the sermon. I, I, I didn't get the official count. So if you counted, let me, let me know. But I, I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks so much for listening. Uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts on, on the sermon. Uh, you can email me, Bryce, at unpackingit.com. We'll be back next week with the normal uh, format for the show, but, but I hope you enjoyed kind of a special uh, special edition of the show today uh, with the sermon from The Point Church, uh, the church that I uh, love and, and am a part of. And so I'm very thankful for that opportunity uh, to be a part of the team series. So, so a lot of fun. You're used to hearing uh, Ray as a guest co-host here on the Unpacking It podcast. So, uh, so I appreciate him uh, letting me be a part of the, uh, the teaching team uh, at the point. So looking forward to, uh, this fall, a lot going on here at unpacking it. Glad to have you a part of the journey. We hope that you have subscribed to the podcast, subscribe to the devotional email that goes out Monday, Wednesday, Fridays. You can sign up for that on unpacking it.com. And then also, uh, make sure you become a free member of fantasy football fellowship, go to fantasy football fellowship.com for Aaron. I'm Bryce. I'm a sports fan who follows Jesus. I believe in the good news that he died on the cross for my sin. He was resurrected. And through faith, I've been saved by his grace. I hope that is true for you as well. And I hope you'll join me as we live life as sports fans who follow Jesus together. Have a great rest of your day. And we'll talk to you next time right here on the Unpacking It podcast.